Mount Mitchell is that way. Mount Craig is about a mile and a half that way. We are going to Mount Craig. Let's go. The hike to Mount Craig is strenuous. Uh, Judy's shooting some footage. You're going to see it in a minute. Uh, there's a couple of boulder fields. It's it's two miles of what the North Carolina State Park System calls a strenuous hike. Uh, leave it to them to call something that's a killer only strenuous. But you'll see why when I get close to the summit, why I'm bothering to take a hike and to film a video and to um, give you a sermon from here. And uh, all shall be made clear in a while. Just a couple of moments for you. It'll be like an hour for me, so stay tuned. We're gonna see you further up the trail. Now we go back up. Now I'm wishing I hadn't put my fleece on. One thing about climbing from Mount Mitchell down through the gap and up to Mount Craig, man, I could do it when I was 18, but now it's time for a break. So boulders like you see behind me, it's here all the way to the top. Now it'll still be worth it. So hang on just a little bit longer. That parking lot way off the distance is where we started. Oh really? We came down through the gap. Over here, about 400 yards off the summit of Mount Craig. And it's a killer hike, but the killer hike gives you that view. And that view is the entire point. We're going to need to set up and get ready for me to actually do the sermon, but. It's coming from Mount Craig. It's the second highest point east of the Mississippi. It's only 12 feet lower than Mount Mitchell, which is two miles to the south. Stay tuned. I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to do it right now. Now it's time to get to the point. Um, a two mile hike, and it's a tough hike. I first did it when I was probably 18 years old. And truth be told, this may be the last time in my life that I do this hike. I don't know. Uh, I hope not. But it's a hard, hard hike uh, to get from Mitchell North to Mount Craig. And I'm about maybe 300 yards south of the summit of Mount Craig. Uh, I've made this hike, I don't know, four or five times since I was in high school. And it's always mesmerized me it's so stunning to be up here in the balsams if you could smell uh, the the balsam the fir trees that I'm smelling you would understand if you've driven the Blue Ridge Parkway you know what I'm talking about but more importantly one time I was hiking alone uh, it was fairly cool weather and then there weren't other hikers around so I had this mountain all to myself and I stopped and this exact vista that you're looking at over my shoulder I stopped and just paused at it and I saw a vision a vision from God a honest 
to goodness, that's the way I have to describe it. And we don't talk about this very often. Uh, in about a month or so, when we hit Advent, one of the passages in Isaiah talks about looking to the coming of the Lord and the coming of the Messiah is a time when old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions. But let's be honest. When in our lifetime have we ever had visions and known beyond any shadow of a doubt this is something God is showing us? I had one of the very few in my lifetime right here. Probably only two or three times in my life has that ever happened to me with such clarity that the message I was getting from what I was seeing, beyond a doubt, I knew it was God speaking to me. Uh, we use that euphemistic language all the time, and we, I think we use it unfortunately. We say, God told me, when we're really saying what we believe or what our opinion is. But let me get to the vision, because it certainly is pertinent for us right now, just a few weeks before an election, during a campaign season that we use words like polarized nation um, we use words like distraught we use words like uh, is the election going to be stolen are voters being suppressed back and forth and back and forth it's a very tenuous time a lot of people are saying that there's a lot riding on what happens on november the third we are a polarized nation in a lot of ways, left, right, progressive, conservative, liberal, evangelical, back and forth. It's like we've declared the no man's land and we've divided up teams and it's a battle to the death. Some people are talking like that. When I had a vision here some years back, um, there was a, a lot of controversy going on both in our denomination and in the church I was serving. It was, it was one of those times similar to now. It was tough. It was a distraught time. We had weighty matters we were talking about. Uh, in particular, we were talking about whether or not we finally healed the rift that happened because of the Civil War. It only took us 150 some years, but finally we got around to talking about the North versus South Church, the PCUS in the South, the UPC USA in the North. Isn't it about time we declared our unity again? Such a noble sentiment, and yet there were people on both sides of the argument vehemently opposed. There was unbelievably venomous language being tossed. And when the reunion was voted on and happened in 1983, some of our folks left. And they left saying, we're not going to be a part of this. We're going to take our toys and go make another sandbox. It was a time like that, a time like we're in right now. And I sat here one day, and I looked out at this vista, and... The clouds and the shadow formed such a strange vision that it captivated me. If you look, and if you're looking over my shoulder and you look out in the vista, you can see places where there's not much cloud cover today, but you can see places where there's a deep, dark shadow on the mountains. The cloud cover causes that. Uh, if there were more clouds today, you would see places where it's very dark, and very bright in other places where you see the fall colors and the very bright. The day I looked at this, I saw a left versus right continuum. From as far left as I could see to as far right as I could see, the clouds and the sunlight formed a vision that stunned me. Here's what I saw, and I'll try to describe it, and I might try to Photoshop this view for you. What I was looking at was far, far to the extreme left. And yeah, the metaphor works. Far to the extreme left, the land was so dark because of the cloud cover, it was black. And far to the right, I saw exactly the same thing. On either extreme, the land was dark and black. And dead center, right down the middle remember the middle of the road is where you find most traffic accidents and episcopalians right dead center there was another portion that was just as dark 
in between on the left and in between on the right it was so bright and sunny and the colors were so vibrant it was like looking at a painting and, and I saw a standard deviation bell curve if you will I saw an extreme small percentage on the left this just completely lost in the dark call them evil if you want that's okay and I saw exactly the same thing on the extreme small percentage on the right and right in the center they were no different than the extreme left and the extreme right remember the book of Revelation where the angel speaks to the church of Laodicea and says you're the one I'm going to spit out of my mouth because you're neither warm you're neither cold you're lukewarm you're neither hot nor cold I'm gonna spit you out you, you stand for nothing dead center is where it's all just relative it's all just compromise I'll bring your own beliefs we don't much care let's don't fight there are things that are not hills that we need to choose to die upon and there are some of those perhaps not as many as some people think in that though the sunny area here to the left the sunny area there to the right they looked identical now think about that in terms of conservative liberal in terms of politically right versus left if you find yourself somewhere on the left please dear God don't find yourself in the extreme left because if you do chances are you're out there in the dark you're so far off the reservation then number one no one's gonna listen to you and number two if they do listen to you no good's gonna come of it the the, the ultra ultra radical voices that are saying burn it all down nothing's salvageable let's just let it all let's shoot them all let God sort them out you don't want to find yourself there you don't want to find yourself over there on the right on that extreme either and we've been seeing some of that in the news sorry conservative friends of mine but the proud boys and others they're over there and they are as in the dark as anything I've ever seen and there's not very many of them but why did they get all of the headline news and why did those way over here in the Antifa blow the whole world up why why did they get all the headlines when there's so much good and there's so much good on the right side of center and on the left side of center you all know me you know I'm a pretty liberal person in a lot of ways yeah I'm over here on the left I think I'm just marginally left of center I know I'm an, I'm a lot more in this conservative liberal middle ground than I used to be I used to be over in the right so what there's just as much Sun over here as there is over there that's what I saw one day up here there are friends of mine there are members of both of our churches that are on the left of center and on the right of center and we need to figure out here's the message they are not your enemy these folks over here are not my enemy those folks over there are not your enemy the areas where there's light we should recognize the big tent God calls us to inhabit it doesn't matter if you're conservative or liberal it doesn't matter really if you're Republican or Democrat as long as you're not so extreme that you're so out there on the fringe that nothing you say or nothing you do no good's gonna come of it and also as long as you're not dead center so namby-pamby so wishy-washy that every time you open your mouth nothing meaningful ever comes out that's the church of Laodicea I saw that as clear as a bell one day and I don't know if it was 15 years ago 20 years ago 25 years ago I wished I remembered but it was a stunning stunning thought and it was one of those thoughts that could only have come from God there's some cloud cover right there and if you look out when I switch the camera over to coming over my shoulder you can see how dark the foliage looks below me there's a couple of places they're very dark that's what I saw three distinct 
striations, markings of all of the landscape from as close right over the ridge here, the ledge where if I jumped I would tumble a thousand feet, all the way out southwest looking all the way to Mount Pisgah even. That's how far the dark and the light went the day that I saw it. And it was a stunning message. I think I've had three, three times in my life that I could call I've had a vision from God. Nothing real earth shattering in them. One had to do with a book, a fiction book, believe it or not, by J.R.R. Tolkien. The Lord of the Rings was where I believe God spoke to me to tell me I was to move to North Carolina and take a church. And once was a lightning flash on the intercoastal waterway at St. Simons Island, Georgia, which was God telling me, be very careful, you're a little too pissed off right now and I'm not happy with you. That's another sermon for another day. For now, why don't we between now and election day take to heart the fact that there are so many of us Americans and Christians on the right, on the left, not on the extremes and not dead center, but both sides, the standard deviation of a bell curve, millions upon millions of people who are Americans and Christians, why don't we act like we are brothers and sisters and get over all the fighting and realize we're all in this together? It was a book I read not too long ago, a fantasy book, a fiction book. Two dwarves were talking to one another. One was just made king. And he talked about a guy who was trying to ruin everything they had planned. And he said, you know, we're always going to fight with one another. We're always going to try to knock people out of the boat, push them over the side. But only a crazy person tries to knock a hole in the boat. We're all in the same boat together. And that's what I saw. Something to ponder. I hope you do ponder it. I hope you also enjoy the view. Uh, I'm probably going to let the cameras run and just be quiet. And... Um, have some more of this footage maybe for the offertory today or something because it's a stunning view and it's a place where God said listen I'm talking I want you to listen carefully so think about it and I will see you maybe back at the parking lot we'll see amen